Hi guys, my name is Jonathan from Jovenel Auto Works San Diego, and today I'll be showing you how to assemble a K-Series 6-speed transmission. The transmission we will be assembling today is off of a 2006 Acura RSX Type S, and the assembly procedures should be the same for all K-Series transmissions offered by Honda and Acura. We will be upgrading the synchros to Synchrotech carbon line synchros, and we will also be replacing the synchro springs synchro sleeves, and all the various bearing, seals, o-rings, and crush washers. I have all of the parts laid out, cleaned and prepped, and all clearances checked. So it's all ready for final assembly. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's get started. I usually like to start with getting the casings prepped, install the bearings and seals onto the casings. That allows me to also use the bottom half to hold the input shaft and the counter shaft while I assemble them. Uh, I like to start with the bottom half of the casing. I'll put the counter shaft bearing here. I like to do this first because I want to use a torch to heat up the casing to let it expand a little bit so that the bearing can go in a little easier. And since we will be installing an input shaft seal, I don't want to use a torch in this area if the input shaft seal is there. So I like to do this first because of that reason. Also don't want to forget to install this uh, plate goes right here. So let's go ahead and do that. I like to lube it up. This is a Honda manual transmission fluid. This makes it easier for the bearing to go in. Oh, and I also like to submerge the bearings in the fluid before I install them. So while that's there, I'll go ahead and heat it up. Damaging the new bearing. Let's go grab this from there. Oh, don't forget that plate. Okay. Make sure you hammer it in evenly, because you can damage the case if it's on crooked. And once it's lined up, it actually kind of drops into place. You hear how it changes tone? That means it bottomed out, which is perfect. Go ahead and put that away. Now we need to install the uh, counter shaft bearing retainer. It's gonna be this piece right here. It goes like that. And 
then this will get torqued down to 105 inch pounds. Grab my torque wrenches real quick. Mark these. This is how I know that I've tightened them. All right. Now we can go ahead and install the input shaft seal. I like to use this uh, assembly loop. It's a Permatex Ultra Slick. I use it to when I assemble engines. And I use this on seals when I install them, regardless if it's from an engine for an engine or transmission, just about anything. Helps me prevent from damaging the uh, seal during the install. And if you lube it up good enough, a lot of times you can just uh, push it inside. I was able to push inside, but due to the way it's shaped, I'm not able to push it in all the way. So I'm going to use a socket extension and a hammer to push it in the rest of the way. Just got to be very careful. And make sure you only hit the edge of the outer um, rim of the seal. Just about bottomed out. Not a little more. Perfect. It's about flush with the casing now. Now we're going to go ahead and install the input shaft bearing. Put that dip inside there. And I'm going to heat up the area that I'm going to sit, just so it can expand a little bit. And so I'll have an easier time installing the bearing. Uh, I don't want to use a torch here because I don't want to burn the rubber on that new seal. So I'll use a heat gun.
use the old bearing to install. You heard how it changed tone. That means it's bottomed out. That's the sound we're looking for. All right. I just like to verify that that seal isn't touching the bottom of the bearing, and that works perfect. Yep, it's not touching, so that's great. Seal is installed correctly as well as the bearing. Now I like to install the uh, axle seal. So I'll flip this around. And that should be this seal right here, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, that is it. Let me change my glove out real quick. Again, lube the seal and lube where the seal goes in. Like I said earlier, if you have enough lube, you should be able to push it in by hand, which is ideal, because anytime you use a hammer, you risk damaging the seal. And you want to get it till it's just a little bit over flush with the casing. Okay. That feels just about right. Wonderful. Next, I'd like to install the clutch for pivot ball. It's going to be this piece right here. This one gets torqued down to
This one gets torqued down to 33 foot pounds. That is just about it for the bottom half of the casing. We will now move to the top half. So on the top half, I like to start with replacing the uh, counter shaft retainer ring. It's like this, this should always be replaced. This ring basically hugs around the counter shaft bearing and it prevents the counter shaft from moving up and down. This can wear out and bend over time. So to make sure that this is a nice and tight fit and it's secure, we always replace it. It's usually included in the single tech kits. I like to lube it up before I install it. A little dark, I don't know if you guys could see it inside that case. So we want to make it where the snap ring is, the ends are right around that hole right there. So, I can slip it in the slot. And just like that, the snap ring is in or the retainer ring into. You can see the ends are right here. Next I will put the input shaft bearing shim, which is right there. And that shim fires this uh, plate just like that counter shaft bearing. Don't forget to put this in and that sits right there. Make sure it sits inside the groove. or install the shim with these snap ring pliers. Again, you have to make sure that plate is on the center. If it's not in the center, it will be pushed out and the snap ring can't sit flat. The snap ring is supposed to be able to sit flat on it, and this should be able to rotate. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can still rotate this, that plate. All right, so that concludes that. Now we will be installing the differential shim. It goes right here. Next up, we'll go ahead and install the axle seal.
again if it's lubed up enough. Let's push it in my hand. You want this just a little above flush with the casing. Almost forgot. Let's put the magnet on the bottom half of the casing right now. Definitely don't want to forget to put the magnet in there. That's an absolute must. It's happened to me before where I assembled the transmission, I forgot the magnet, and we would have to open it back up again. It's vital to have that there. The transmission was designed with one, and it should be there when you assemble it. So make sure you don't overlook that. All right, moving on. Now that the casings are prepped, we'll go ahead and start assembling the sub-assemblies. I like to do it in the order of the input shaft, the counter shaft, the differential and the ring gear, and then the shift selector. Like what I said, now that the casing is assembled, we can actually use the bottom casing to hold the counter shaft. So get a piece of wood because the counter shaft actually protrudes farther than the transmission and you don't want the end to touch. So support it on a piece of wood. So do it. One over here and one over here, being careful not to let a piece of wood touch that seal. Okay? I don't know if you can see that, it's not on the seal. So now that the casing is lifted, we can go ahead and put the counter shaft in. I like to put lube on it so it doesn't damage the seal. Uh, we are gonna put these, uh, the spring washer and the shim when we do final assembly, but right now we don't have to put that on because we will just be assembling the uh, input shaft and then taking it off. We're strictly just using the casing to hold it right now. Just like that. Now we can proceed with the assembly of the input shaft. So I like to put transmission fluid on his journal. Dip this in the um, oil, I have my scribe the mark that make sure it goes up. It honestly can go backwards or the other way, but whenever I disassemble the transmission, I always scribe a reference mark to see how it was before, and I like to follow it. So we'll go ahead and put this. This is going to be third gear. lube or manual transmission fluid on the carbon lining. Install that. Also on this right here. And in the carbon lining on the top of the or the top And make sure that it drops in there. Make sure it can spin. Little bit of lube on the ring. These rings can go either way. And also the uh, synchro on the third and fourth set are the same. You could literally use either or. First, second, 
and fifth and sixth. They're all the same. You could use either one. They're the same size. Same size ring, same size synchro. So that's how that goes. And we're going to put the synchro hub. And these synchro hubs only go in one way. I don't know if you see that. I scribe marks. When I disassemble it, I actually engrave and scribe marks so I know which way is top. You do not want to get that mixed up. If you look here, I don't know if you see that. This is like that. If you had to flip the other way, it would not work correctly. Put the lube. The spines here and the spines here. These only go in one way. If you try to go in, or they only go in a couple ways sometimes. Um, I Before I laid them out, I actually scribed the mark. And I know that that just goes right there. It drops in. But yeah, it doesn't go in just any way. Sometimes it only goes in one way. Sometimes it'll go in on every uh, opening. But as long as it goes in without force, you will be okay. Let's see if it engages third gear, and it does. It has a nice click. Okay, now we can install the fourth gear synchro spring. Again, these are the same. These can be interchanged. Move up the carbon lining. Loop this up. Move the carbon line in here. And get them to match. Right there, you see how they match in? And we can install that here. Next, we can install fourth gear. Make sure that these three holes line up with these three right here. So oh, we do that by, if you see when I engage it, it'll drop. Oh, see how it dropped? The gear engaged the uh, synchro. Let's dip the needle beam. Slew. This right there. Dip the needle bearing again. That's going to be the needle bearing for, looks like, fifth gear. Lube here and lube the contact area where the synchro sits. On uh, fifth and sixth, it uses a single cone synchro. I don't know if you remembered when I assembled those, there was uh, three parts to it. Uh, this one's a single cone. It goes right there, like that. Synchro spring. Let's move the hub up. And then make sure the synchro drops into one of the slots. It's a little tough to get in, so we'll use a hammer and one of these spacers I have laying around. That actually won't work. Let me get a brass. I'm using brass so it doesn't mar the surface. Brass is softer than steel. Change tone when I uh, when I bottomed out. That's the sound I want to hear. And make sure that that engages there.
This is the 5th and 6th gear sleeve. I have a mark scribe there. It's a little noisy. There's uh, airplanes passing by. My shop is right next to a, a Marine Corps Air Base. But I also forgot earlier to test the, the operation of the fourth gear. And it does. It engages. Third. Fourth. Perfect. Uh, let's test fifth. Fifth engages. Perfect. And we'll put the synchro spring onto the synchro. Do the carbon lining. Install that there. See how it's in the slots. Install this bearing trim. the needle bearing and transmission fluid and then I'll lube the sixth gear where the uh, synchro makes contact to the cone and on the inside where the bearing sits. Let's test operation and engage a sixth gear. Lastly we'll install the Input shaft bearing. This only goes in one way. So you can see this one, it protrudes out. Oh no, this side is flat. The area that protrudes out faces down. Usually the logo, which is gonna be in this case, NTN, the manufacturer of this bearing. Logo usually faces up. Same with the input shaft bearing and the counter shaft bearing. So go ahead and put that on there. Socket, we make sure the socket can clear that in the can, and then we just hammer it into place. Drops right in. Let's go ahead and verify the operation of all the gears. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. That concludes the assembly of the input shaft. Go ahead and take that out. Set that right there. Let me actually put a tool there so it doesn't roll off. Moving on to the counter shaft assembly. This is the bare counter shaft. Place it here. First, we will be installing this uh, bearing journal. I like to lube it up right there. This is the needle bearing for first gear. Step that. With the lubricate first gear and the synchro cone. That sits right there just like that. Next up is first gear synchro. We lubricate the carbon lining. This part, as well as the carbon lining on the top. And the synchro spring. 
these three right here is supposed to engage onto there. Feel right, let me see what happened. Let's put this there. Put this here. There we go. Or no. It is still feels like a jam. Let's go ahead and check. Let's investigate what's going on. For some reason, this one feels like it has a hard time sitting. Oh, well, actually, it doesn't. So it's just got to make sure we put it in straight. So that is in. Wonderful. That has a nice even gap all around. Next we will be installing the hub, first and second gear hub. Locate that. Let's also locate the splines so it goes in easier. Make sure that this sits inside the slot. Yeah. Okay. Next is the first and second gear selector. This one goes in one way. Can't go in this way, it goes like this. This is for to engage reverse. The transmission will not work correctly if you have this upside down. And I scribed the mark there. That way it can just drop into place. Looks like first gear. Spin this. Looks like first gear engaged, no problem. All right. Next up, install the synchro ring or spring onto the second gear synchro. Again, lubricating the carbon lining. We can have it like this, just like that. We install that, making sure that it sits over there, like that. See that? Next, we will be installing this rubber piece right here. This, these small pins or feet right there, they actually sit and hug this journal. See that? How it doesn't want to go through? And they, these have to sit in one, of, in one of the six of those. Or There's basically six ways it can sit. There's six um, slots and there's three um, feet on this and they can sit one of six ways. But make sure that it engages and it does, see how it's engaged, doesn't want to spin. And then we'll install this. This sits right there, see that? See how it doesn't spin? And we can install the needle bearing. And second gear. You have to make sure that these three slots match up with the 
these right here, the feet of the second gear synchro. So see right there it'll drop. Boom. See how that dropped? Let's go ahead and test out the operation. It engages. Let's do first gear again. Perfect. Second gear again. Wonderful. Awesome. Next, we will be installing the stationary gears. Um, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth gear. I call them stationary because they are stationary to the counter shaft. If you notice, the first gear can spin independently, and the second gear can spin independently. That's because the synchros for first and second, or I'm sorry, that's because the stationary gears for first and second are on the input shaft. The uh, stationary gears on the counter shaft are for third, fourth, and fifth because they spin freely here on this uh, input shaft. All right, let's lube these up real good because they might need to be pressed on. I had to put them on the shop press to take them out. So let's hope that we don't have to do that to put them on. Just go ahead and drop it in. Use a brass hammer or a brass pin. I'm not sure if that's bottom out, so I'll go ahead and put it on the shop press just to verify. So I like to put something like this there, and then we can flip it upside down. Let me adjust this. find the way it was. Go back. Looks like it was already good the way it was. It was already bottomed out, so that's a good thing.
I'll go ahead and use the press for this. Just it. I like to first put it on, um, put it like this so I can get it started nice and straight. And once that shaft gets flush with this, that's when I will move it to something like this. It's just a lot stronger to start it like this and make it go a lot straight too. And always put a spacer in between. This is steel, that's steel. You can seriously damage this and it won't. It will, it will just make things a lot worse. This is made out of aluminum, so it's soft. So I like to put a spacer in between. Notice how my uh, hydraulic press is air powered. I strictly use that only to bring it down quicker. And I don't use that to actual press um, the gears in or actually anything, whether I'm doing ball joints or wheel bearings and stuff like that. Because when you're pressing this, you can't feel how much force is in there. There could be tons of force and you could seriously damage some parts if you're forcing something. So I like to do it by hand just so I can get a feel for it. Usually you can tell if it's not going in correctly, but as you can see, I'm not having a hard time pushing it down. But if I was using this, I wouldn't know. So, it just about bottomed out, so now I'm gonna open it up so that this shaft can go through. We'll be installing the uh, fifth gear. This one's gonna be another stationary gear.
shift gear is installed. Now we're going to install sixth gear. as well. We're going to install the shim, this washer, goes in between um, six gear and the bearing. As you can see, it sits right there. See that? Make sure it's centered right there. And this goes on like this with the uh, retainer ring groove facing up. Also, the logo of the bearing manufacturer facing up as well. Go ahead and put that on. Counter shaft bolt. This is going to be reverse threads. Again, left hand threads. You guys have to be careful when you're removing this because if you remove it normally as if it was a right hand thread, you can seriously damage this as well as the shaft. So, definitely don't want that to happen. So, once again, counter shaft bolt, left hand thread. I like to lubricate the threads and that cone area where this cone sits there. This one is a 12 millimeter Allen head. Let's start it off with a gun. And then finish it off with the torque specification, which is 87 foot pounds. It's going to be a little tricky on how we're going to securely mount this so we can get an accurate torque spec reading on it. So we'll mount it on the vise and see what we can do. Once again, that's going to be 87 foot pounds. want to mount this on the vise without any piece of wood or rag to prevent the gears from getting damaged. These gears are made out of hardened steel and they're very brittle so they can chip on you if you're not careful. And I'll actually use this piece of wood and another one I have.
spacer of some sort. and tight 87 foot pounds once again this is the left hand thread Successfully torqued down. Includes, or actually, before we say that, let's just check to make sure first and second gear engages. Perfect. Cool. The counter shaft is now complete. change out my gloves. up we're gonna install the um, differential bearings as well as the ring gear I like to start with installing the bearings first these are the new bearings I usually, I usually like the old logo out and I like to dip them inside my new transmission fluid for installing them. Let's 
start with this one. And we'll use this to install it. Next we will install the ring gear onto the differential. Goes like this. And I actually scribe the mark where this pin is, where it goes back to the same position it was when I took it apart. There's going to be 10 differential bolts or differential ring gear bolts. I like to put some lube on the bolt since they're fine thread, just makes it go in a lot easier. Make sure that they don't strip. Make it tighten down. We'll go in a crisscross pattern. have to mount that differential onto a vise so that we can target a spec. 
and those get torqued down to 89 foot pounds. What I like to do is I like to put it in a vise like this. And although you won't be able to access one of the bolts, I uh, rotate it so I can access it after I'm done doing a crisscross pattern on the other ones. And you gotta make sure it's real tight because uh, 89 foot pounds is a lot. so that I know which one has, which ones have already been torqued and which one have it. Go ahead and rotate it. one more time around. Hit it one last time for that one bolt that I did not get the second time. It's gonna be where'd go, where'd you go? I believe that one. Oh no, not that one. Oh it is that one. and verify that all of them have been torqued down twice and they have and that concludes the differential and ring gear assembly
next we will be assembling the shift select or the shift selector assembly. Put this away real quick. Let's get all of this stuff right here. This one can get a little tricky sometimes. So that's why we have, or I have documentation on that that I can refer to. Let me move this here. All right, we will start by installing the seals. There's gonna be a seal here, which is gonna be this. And then there's gonna be a seal over there. Same thing, the assembly loop. going easy just like that. When you put them in dry, they have a hard time and then you're gonna end up using a hammer and it can damage seals. So as much as possible, I don't wanna use a hammer. Next, I will be installing the breather port plate. This is basically allows air to go out and in as the, temp, the transmission heats up. Um, air pressure will build inside and as it cools down, vacuum can be built inside. So they allow a breather to allow air to enter in and out and make it so that the, uh, there's no air pressure that builds inside of the transmission or vacuum. So we'll install this. And now it gets torqued down to, what was it? I believe I had a conversion for that. It was 87 inch pounds. Pay attention to how I said inch pounds, not foot pounds. 87. Now we're going to have to stake the screw bolt to this slot right there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but basically you just want it to stay there and not come loose on its own. And that is staked. Then we will be installing this here. Some lube on it so it doesn't damage the seal. into that slot and once it's engaged now you can put in this uh, pin and that pin prevents this from going in and out see how it's locked inside
Let me go disassemble it for you. So that you guys can see how it goes. Okay. So this is the reverse lockout solenoid. This is the reverse lockout arm. And this spring goes on it just like this. Okay. And then that spring is supposed to have tension this way. So once you have it tensioned that way, put the pin in and now it rests over there. So that's how that goes in. This pin can slide out on its own if it's not installed, so just make sure you don't lose that. Now we will be installing the uh, select lever arm, which is this right here. Put some lube right here where it sits on the seal again so it doesn't damage the seal going in. And we'll go ahead and install the lever. Actually, I just forgot we have to pull this pin out real quick just so that it can come out ever so slightly enough for me to put this in. Because that, where'd it go? This piece right here engages right here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and get some Honda grease so that that joint can move freely. a little bit. By the way, that is the Honda Super High Temp. Urea or Urea Grease, I don't know how you pronounce it, but that's what they say to use on clutch splines, throw out bearings, and stuff like that. engaged this now sits in there and now that it sits there we can reinsert the pin if we had the pin still inserted we wouldn't have been able to pull this out enough to engage it but it operates like that next we will be installing the washer for the spring that goes right there Put this spring in, and this spring in, and then the spring collar right there. And we'll install it like this. So we have this face on the top. This piece has a spring that sits, let's see what it says, it's like that. Looks 
like it engages here. This sits right here. Before I tighten that down, let me verify. down to 23 Set this over here for now. Let me just verify, and everything looks good. This next step, we're going to start using clean rags because we are going to using sealant. All um, gasket sealing surfaces have been cleaned with a, a plastic bristle uh, brush. Now we just got to get it. All the, get all the uh, oils that may be on there off and have it nice and dry so that the on the bond and stick to it real good. Take this piece out. I only use Honda bond on basically all the stuff I seal, whether it's engine or transmission. never have issue with them. It's a little more expensive, but if your seal, when you apply the sealant, if it doesn't seal, especially on the case halves, you're gonna have to take the transmission out again. This stuff is about 15, sometimes up to 20 bucks, depending on where you buy it from. I'd rather spend the extra money and have it right the first time than buy the cheap stuff that are sold in auto parts stores and have to risk me taking this transmission out redo all this work. 
and apply a small bead. And we're not going to flatten it out. I don't know why people do that. They flatten it. Um, kind of defeats the purpose of putting down a tall bead. Because when you have a tall bead, it allows the sealant to reach all the areas that might be uneven. So I'll make sure this pin is in. And then I'll get one of the bolts in without pushing it in just yet because I don't want the sealant to make contact with it until it's perfectly lined up. So as you can see, as I'm putting these three bolts in, the sealant hasn't touched yet. And then now that the three bolts are lined up, I can just drop it and then let the sealant do its work. Those get torqued down to one oh five inch pounds. I don't know about you, but that looks like an original seal from the factory. That's how it should look like every time. And if you do it the way I showed you guys, you can make your seals look like that all the time, every single time. It's very consistent. Okay. The gear selector assembly is now complete. Go ahead and side now that the four main assemblies the uh, input shaft counter shaft differential ring gear and the shift or uh, the gear selector assembly is uh, put together we can finally assemble the transmission uh, we'll go ahead and put in the the two the input or actually first I forgot we need to put in the differential. I like to put lube or manual transmission fluid on the area where the bearing is going to sit. And then I like to install it. So it sits like that. Perfect. Now I like to flip it around so I can have access to the, the shifter forks. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the input shaft spring washer in the shims. One shim is a flat washer. That's gonna be the actual shim that changes the clearance of the thrust clearance. And one of them is gonna be a spring washer. The spring has a cone shape. You want to install it where the cone is like this and the pointed area is facing the bearing and then the flat washer on top. That spring washer basically allows the input shaft to stay in one direction, but still, or uh, rest in one direction, 
because it adds tension, but it allows it also to move the other um, when the clearance changes or if it ever has any thrust forces. That's why they call it a thrust clearance and a thrust shift. So the input shaft is gonna be mounted here on the right, the counter is on the left, so I'm gonna go ahead and position it accordingly. I'll put the gear selector sleeves on the center. And have it so that they engage like that. Next, I'm gonna get the um, shifter for it. This one, this actually sits right there. So I will move that up so it goes like that. And I forgot which way these go, but we will see. Go ahead and leave. mistaken it goes like this I may be wrong but we will see yeah so now I like to put lube on the shafts or the forks or manual transmission fluid I mean also over here I like to put some where the uh, selector fork shafts enter so it goes in easier and then should be one motion to get it all in get everything lined up first uh, let me see something does not look correct Before we put it in, you gotta make sure you have the input shaft washers in, and then just put it in in one motion. Just like that, let it engage into the differential here, and then drop the shift shafts. See how that went in? Perfect. Let me make sure that it's been free. Forks are installed correctly. Perfect. All right. So far, so good. Now we will install the reverse gear selector. That's this piece right here. And it goes right here. Engages this right here. See that? So that gets fastened down by these two. And they get torqued down to. 
11 foot pages. Now we can install the reverse gear shaft. I like to loop the shaft. There's gonna be a hole with threads on it that's gonna face, um, it's gonna be on top, and it's gonna face out. And this reverse gear gets mounted like this. You basically can't get it wrong. If you had it the other way, it wouldn't fit. See that? So, have it this way. And we have to pay attention to the way this is facing because this is actually going to go through um, right here. And if we put the transmission casing on and this is facing like this, then we'd have to take it back out to spin it because there's a bolt that goes through here and engages there. So we'll actually position that now. So let's try to figure out which, which is this. So these two is going to be from here. Okay. Let's see. Let me make sure. Let me verify. That's, yeah, that's going to be right there. So we want this to be facing slightly, slightly off. So right there. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as the hole's facing there because you can always get a pin and wiggle it until it straightens out. But you just definitely don't want it like that. Definitely don't want that. But you can have it like this. And then you can center it once the uh, casing is on. All right, that concludes that. We are now ready to put some sealant on this and to put the casing on. So I want to make sure it's nice and dry and clean. We already use a plastic uh, plastic um, brush attachment with the die grinder to clean off the, all the old sealant. And now we're just going to use brake cleaner to make sure that there's no grease or oil on it. And that's nice and dry so that the uh, Honda bar can stick onto it. And we'll also do the same for the upper half. In case just to be 100% sure. At this point in time, I don't put the dowel pins on. That way, there's gonna be three dowel pins, one right here, here, and here. And I don't put them on, that way I can have better access to lay down the Honda bond or seal it. But you have to remember to put those dowel pins on before you put the casing on. You cannot run the transmission without the dowel pins. It'll mess everything up. These won't be perfectly aligned, all kinds of crazy stuff. So those dowel pins are vital. Let's go ahead and continue with um, laying down the Honda bar. And I like to put this right here on the casing, that way I don't forget. You will need to put this on. If you forget, this happened to me before where I forgot to put that on. 
and I'd have to t take it apart again just to put this on. So just make sure you do not forget that one. All right, let's lay down a bead. We're gonna do a nice tall bead. We're not gonna flatten it down. I don't know why people do that. But literally, all you need to do is this. And you wanna go inside of the bolt holes. If you want it outside, oil will leak out. I see people go inside and outside. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt, but it would be a waste of Honda Bond and it would be a lot messier because you have excess sealant that you don't need. See how there's a dowel pin there? If the dowel pin was there, I wouldn't be able to maneuver this uh, sealant around there very well. Nice tall bead. Tall and consistent. like that okay make sure there's no areas where there's a cut out and sealant that looks good before we put the casings on let's make sure that we have the dowel pins on my hands are a little oily so I'm just clean my hands oil on the dowel pins get on that sealant and contaminate it. So we'll install one of them in here. One of them here. And one of them there. I think I touched that. some transmission fluid where that differential bearing is going to sit and some transmission fluid where the counter shaft and the input shaft bearings as well as the shift fork and the reverse shaft is going to go in. Then we will install this piece. Basically, when the car is moving, fluid will get splashed around and then it stores it here and then it kind of sprinkles it through these holes and gets lubrication where it needs. And that piece goes like this. This sits in there, in that groove, and these two sit in this hole. Like that. Sometimes this will fall out, and this time it did. So what I like to do is put a dab of RTV on the bond so that it holds it. some transmission fluid where that counter shaft bearing is going to sit and that snap ring for the counter shaft bearing and lastly transmission fluid on the input shaft bearing and uh, the fork shafts are going to go in. Now before we close it up we just verify one last time to make sure that we did not forget the magnet, that uh, oil plate, the shim for the oil plate, 
and the shim, or the shim for the uh, input shaft bearing that holds the oil plate, and the shim for this differential bearing. And this, this uh, oil, um, or the transmission fluid girdle, whatever you call it, baffle. And the dowel pins. Make sure that you do not forget those, because if you forget any of those items, you will have to take it all apart, clean out all the sealant, and it becomes a mess. So now we will install the casing. I will flip it around so that I can actually see this oil baffle or girdle and make sure that it doesn't fall out during the job or during the installation. Make sure everything is good. That's in, that's in. All right, we are looking good. I'm gonna install it slowly. You don't want to shake it too much because you don't want to risk that plastic uh, baffle foam. Rubber mallet. As we pound this down, we want to make sure that the bearing doesn't bottom out and hit this ring just yet. See how this bearing is slowly going higher and higher? Okay. Let's make sure things lined up. All right. And I'm going to use some of the casing bolts aid and uh, casing going in but you don't want to force it sometimes with new bearings and a new build it's a bit tight and you just need a little bit of help with the bolts but you have to have a feel for it where you don't force it and you have to know when what is correct and what isn't. And if it doesn't feel right, there's too much tension, you have to take it all apart again, just to see if there's any obstructions. And I also want to verify that, that reverse bolt. Oh. I can see the hole and I can, so that's good. Okay, we'll slowly tighten it down. And we're watching that bearing. Something didn't feel right there. Let's go and pull it out real quick just to verify that that plastic piece didn't get jammed. I'm pretty sure it's still intact, but just gonna verify. Just 
one last time, make sure nothing's damaged. So it was good still. Doesn't hurt to verify. All right, let's do that one last time. The sealant hasn't fully seated, so we will be perfectly fine putting in just like this. Now we have to open this ring up for the counter shaft. What I'm doing is as I'm going down, I'm making sure this still moves free and it's just about to the point where it doesn't. So now I'll open it up. Let me actually use a needle nose. So I don't want to put tighten the bolts all the way down yet. I'm actually gonna loosen it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the plates or the brackets on. So there's gonna be a bracket here. This one's actually going to be one of the longer bolts. There's going to be two bolts that are longer than the rest of them. And that one's going to go right there. This one right 
here. That's going to be one of the longer ones right here. Uh, see how it's a little longer. Goes right here. Now I can do the final tightening. And I'm going to go by the sequence. It's upside down because the transmission is facing like this. Now at this point, I like to actually engage the um, counter shaft just to make sure it can engage before I fully tighten and torque everything down. So I'll get a screwdriver and usually I can do it like this, but sometimes not able to do it. In this case, I'm not. So what I do sometimes is I actually set a piece of wood on the ground and I'll flip the transmission and sort of like drop it in a little bit and allow the inertia from gravity of it pulling down to engage it. So let me just get these till they're snug. Oh wait, so now you see it's engaged, see how it's in there? I like to spin it, the input shaft, just to make sure it spins free. And you have to make sure it's all neutral before you can do that. And it spins. Now we can torque the sound spec. I flipped it around, so this is now flipped. Torque specification on this, on the transmission casing bolts. Is 20 foot pounds. One. 
12. Thirteen. Make sure we got all of them. Beautiful seal. Looks original. It's like, it's like it's never been rebuilt. Okay, let me just mark these. Now we're going to install that reverse gear um, shaft bolt. That's the one that we position. And actually, it's positioned pretty much straight. I don't know if you guys can see that, but maybe just a little bit of finagling. Just to straighten it out. And it should be good. So that one is gonna require a crush washer that you should always replace. And uses this bolt. And this is the bolt that engages in those threads that I was telling you about. Had that shaft been twisted 90 degrees, it would have been impossible to spin it around to get that bolt to engage. That gets torqued down to 33 foot pounds. Now we will install the uh, shift fork heat hook. Um, it requires a ball, spring, and these uh, special bolts. They're all the same. So Cut like this. Definitely don't want to lose those balls. It's going to be a total of three of them. And there's a crush washer you should always replace whenever you replace it. So put the ball in here. It's an absolute must to put a crush washer spring in. Specifically the crush washer because if you don't put that crush washer, this will actually sit further in and it will get jammed. It's happened to me before in my early days assembling these uh, transmissions. Lastly, this one. And 
And those get torqued down to 16 foot pounds. Next we will be installing the actual shift um, selector or the gear selector. I'm gonna actually put it in first and do a test fit. When you install this, you want this to line up like that. Make sure it fits. Clean the gasket surfaces and we'll apply a bead of um, on the bond. Nice thing, dude. And there's going to be dowel pins. Go right here. I leave them off when I apply the on the bond so that. I doesn't um, interfere with the application. Okay. I'm going to put a plate. That plate right there. And there's going to be two separate, um, two different size bolts. So, I'm going to put this in. Make sure I tightened it. Yep, I tightened it. That's good. And then put the two smaller bolts go right here and right here. Let's torque down to 105 inch pounds.
install this uh, guide pin that actually goes right there. That's for the shift selector. And there's some around. So let's clean up the threads. push itself back when you thread it in and apply itself right there. You'll see what I'm talking about. So you see how it's pushing itself back and then it'll apply there and it squeezes. You already know that's going to be a good seal as it's not going to leak. That gets torqued down to 29. 29 foot pounds. At this point in time, we can now test the operation of the transmission since the rest of the stuff are just um, sensors, switches, and plugs. And let's go ahead and do that right now. So I will set the transmission upright like this. I'll make sure it's in neutral. And verify that the um, anchor shaft spins, and it does. And then I forgot which one is first, but let's see which one is. Let's see what's first. No, it doesn't look like first. Okay, first gear. Second gear, I don't know if you could see it. It's spinning a little faster. Third gear. Fourth gear. Fifth gear, it's spinning a lot faster, harder to turn because of the gear ratio. Sixth gear. Lastly, reverse. It should spin the opposite way, and it does. So we have just verified the operation of this transmission. Pulls in all the gears. So the transmission is pretty much almost done. Just gonna go ahead and do the final, um, the final stuff on it. We'll go ahead and install the reverse switch. This one just uses Honda Bond to seal itself. Apply it on the threads like that. The same way, it's going to seal the same way that the that interlock bolt seals. Just put it like that. That gets torqued down to 22 foot pounds. This uses a 27 millimeter socket. This breather cap goes right here, like that, arrow facing forward. Now we have the vehicle speed sensor. I like to apply a assembly lube and the O-rings I install. You should always replace the O-ring too. Slide it in right there. And that ten millimeter bolt or ten millimeter head bolt gets torqued down to 
channel 5 inch pounds. Close to finished. This is a lift bracket. This is where you can actually lift the transmission from. That gets torqued down to 33 foot pounds. Looks like I'm missing one of the washers, which is the, the common 14 millimeter washer that used for oil changes. I'm gonna go grab some. This would be for the drain. So these two fill plugs, I'm going to leave loose, but I'm going to put it on there. One goes here. That's where we will be filling the oil or the transmission fluid from. And one over here, that's where we're going to be checking the level from. You can also fill it from here. Uh, I think it's easier to fill it through there. And we will put the drain plug on, and we're going to actually torque that one to stay since we will not need to have that loose since it's all finalized now. Just torque down to 29 foot pounds. We're not going to mark these because we didn't tighten them. We left them loose on purpose. Now for that plug to access the counter shaft uh, snapper. Make sure we clean it because it's sealed by on the bond. And that's gonna be a 14 millimeter Allen head. Just a kind of small amount. Nothing crazy. Same thing as um, this, it'll, the threads will push itself back. Make sure this is connected, that's good. But, and when it pushes itself back, it'll make a nice seal. Oh, I can't really see it, but trust me when I say it's sealed. <laughs> that one gets torqued down to, where is it, where is it? 25 foot pounds. This last dowel pin 
actually goes in between the transmission and the uh, engine. There's gonna be a total of two. I'm not sure which one it came out of, but I usually uh, zip tie it to the bell housing. That way, if I put it, the transmission or the mechanic, my mechanic puts it in, they remember to make sure they put it on because sometimes this comes out with the transmission, sometimes it comes out with the engine, or it stays on the engine, or you never know. But I'll actually show you what I'm talking about. There's gonna be two areas where the dowel pin go, right here, one right there. You need those, you absolutely need those. And you install the transmission to the car. It makes sure that this shaft is completely centered to the uh, crankshaft. So, go ahead and zip tie it so that we don't forget about it. Oh, I made a longer one. And then just gets put on either side, depending on which side it has it on, on the vehicle. And just like that, the transmission is assembled. We'll do one last uh, verification. Spins first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Fifth gear, sixth gear, and reverse. And that concludes this K Series six speed transmission assembly. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope it helped any of you guys that need assistance and, or needed assistance in assembling their K Series transmission. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day.